alert. Helium-4 gas at Yellowstone supervolcano has been found by uh, USGS. Clusters of earthquakes at Yellowstone Park caldera is not a good sign, and that they have, they have to be taken very seriously. Data points have to be looked at, and charts daily are created, and they have to analyze this kind of violent movements because magma is moving. Not only magma, we know that Yellowstone is one of the 21 super volcanoes of the world. It has 60% of the world's geysers and over 10,000 hydrothermal areas. In addition, new vents opened up recently that goes right into Mount St. Helens. Scientists believe that helium is slipping out of rocks that were formed during the Archaeon Eon about two and a half billion years ago. But now they're coming out again from Yellowstone Park. It's not a good sign. Yellowstone releases gases ranging from carbon dioxide to methane. We know that every single day, Yellowstone supervolcano releases a whopping 45,000 tons of carbon dioxide. 45,000 tons. Kindly support my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. These are not all images of Yellowstone, but uh, we do have tremendous amount of volcanic activity recently worldwide. Now the 45,000 tons of carbon dioxide recently found means that that was the way that they found that under the magma chamber there was a huge magma reservoir and many geologists believe it goes all the way down to Baja California, the U.S.-Mexico border. Now Bill Evans uh, says that the uh, this is not a good sign. Yellowstone gases ranging from carbon dioxide to methane. Not only was there a sudden rise in the elevation of the ground and development of new cracks, but a gas called helium-4, which is a very rare type of helium, has begun coming out of the surface. Bill Evans, a researcher with the USGS in Menlo Park, California, explained how the helium is released. He said volcanoes most always form on the edges of tectonic plates, but that make up the Earth's crust. Yellowstone sits directly over the middle of a plate. It's part of the crust that formed a very long time ago, billions of years ago, and it's basically been stable since that time. They've had this boring, peaceful existence, and now suddenly they're put out on the front burner. The animals and birds have been dying off, and now are we in danger? This is a chemical called helium-4, that was seen prior to many recent volca volcanoes erupting. Measurements from other GPS stations in northern Yellowstone show smaller displacements forming a circular pattern of deformation. Circular as in the round mouth of a volcano, consistent with a minor pressurization building up of the ground, that is, about 6 to 10 kilometers, that's 4 to 6 miles deep near Norris Junction. Now we know that the the roof of the magma chamber is about three to four miles down. So if you're standing around, for example, uh, the uh, Old Faithful Geyser, you're standing about three miles higher than the roof of the magma chamber. Now the volcano, the volcanic island of El Hierro, the smallest of Spain's Canary Island volcanoes, rumbled and groaned over the course of seven months in 2011 and 12. Gases silently percolated up through the island's soil and groundwater, and eventually a spectacular plume appeared off the southern coast of the island, a sign that El Hierro volcano, the underwater volcano just offshore, had finally erupted. Eleanor Pardon, geologist at Spain's Technological Institute for the Renewable Energies, who led the work, said, we believe that helium can anticipate the detection of magmatic movement even before those movements can be detected by seismic activity. So she believes that uh, what the scientists have recently found is that helium being emitted means that it's a, a precursor to magmatic movements, to volcanic eruptions. 
Researchers have been using gas emissions to forecast volcanic eruptions for the last 30 years, but they usually focus on carbon dioxide. That's the second most abundant gas after water vapor in volcanic eruptions. Helium is a noble gas, and it's a better candidate for tracking and forecasting eruptions because it does not react with rocks or groundwater, and microorganisms don't consume or produce helium. And because of these properties, helium has been considered a, by geochemists as almost ideal geological geochemical indicator that an eruption is near. Pardon and his team found that measuring the flow of helium in El Hierro Island soil and water gave them clues as to when magma under the island was moving and how close it was to the surface, both important factors in forecasting a volcanic eruption. Researchers had been busy collecting, analyzing the helium gas content of more than 8,000 soil and water samples, and data can now be used to monitor volcanoes and forecast future eruptions, according to uh, Live Science links. This is by Royce Christian on News Punch. Thank you for your support. Please leave your comments. Thank you.